with a decentralized autonomous internet. How do you onboard? How do you create an account without permission from anyone else or without a centralized process or server or organization? And how do you do this while maintaining the security and integrity of the network and maintaining personal privacy? I'm Jim Collinson. I'm part of the user experience design team here at MadeSafe. We're building the Safe Network, a decentralized autonomous internet designed for freedom of expression, control of personal data, secure communications, and a whole new economy. On the Safe Network, you don't ever pay to browse or download or read anything from the network. You don't even need an account to do any of that privately and securely. But if you want to add data, upload files, create sites, or for example, send messages, you pay the network, not some company or organization. And you're not paying by being advertised to or having your privacy ripped off. You're not paying with your personal data. You pay in a currency inherent to the network for the resources that you use. In order to create an account, you'll need a small amount of this currency, Safecoin, to get going. But how do you do this? How do users get that initial funding to get going and how do we make it understandable and easy? We've identified numerous approaches to how this could work. We've conducted some tests with users to understand how we might narrow these options down and how we might start building the most useful options first and also a way to test some of the language around these proposals and learn more about what the users might assume or what they might expect from the process and how this would match with the reality. We also wanted to take into account some of the more problematic scenarios, such as when new users are on mobile devices and don't have the option of running a vault, and when things like copying and sending and handling arbitrary files can become troublesome, and also what happens when a user might try to tackle an onboarding process across multiple devices or multiple sessions. How do we deal with that with no central server to fall back on? So we narrowed down the field and then conducted a series of tests on mobile device devices to see how the range of remaining options would stack up against each other and how people would understand and perceive them. So let's take a look at what we learned and where it led us. We presented the test subjects with, with these options here. So we've got earn one for yourself using your computer to earn safe coins to create an account, get an invite, receiving an invite uh, from another user, buy an account, top up a wallet, create an empty wallet, and then have a friend add some safe coin and request an invite, which is asking the community for an invite to get started. So similar to this one here. Most people seemed comfortable uh, with the fact that this option, this first option was only on desktop, but they wanted to understand more. And in fact, we, we built out an onboarding feature tour to, to help with that as a result. Buying an account was understood, but many seemed wary of having to interact with a third party or hand over payment details. And the wording of buying an account also had users questioning who might own it or whether it might be tainted in some way before they had used it. All quite understandable. What didn't fare so well was topping up an empty wallet. It was often misunderstood and almost to the point of being completely ignored by nearly all of our participants. Even when we encouraged them to consider the idea, they didn't really feel comfortable with it. That result, plus the difficulties surrounding generating, handling, forwarding, and managing this wallet process, particularly on mobile devices, was enough for us to um, rule it out at this point. Buying an account is also something that we won't be pursuing at this stage either. Uh, integration with exchanges is definitely something that will need to be tackled, but there are plenty of other elements to come first. And additionally, we, we probably want to pursue some, something along the lines of buying an invite from a third party rather than an account itself. Once we've dived into the design for the invite process, perhaps that story will become clearer to you too. So that leaves our two main priorities for onboarding design at this stage being earning your self-account entirely by yourself through running a vault on a, on a desktop and then the invite process, receiving a gift of an account from a benefactor who is already on the network. 
So let's dive into the design behind the invite process and see how that might work. So in this case, we're looking at how an existing user might purchase and gift an invite to a friend. And then we can see how easy it should be for the new user to get up and running. As a benefactor, someone who wants to help a friend get started, I would navigate to this invite screen within the Safe Network app. And here I can see that I already have some invites that I've created and I can easily generate a new one. After it's generated, I get a QR code that um, if I'm meeting a friend in person, they can easily scan to redeem the invite or I get a link here that I can copy and share in a way that suits. Generating this invite will cost a small amount of Safecoin, but what's happening behind the scenes here is that the Safecoin that you're donating stays within your control until the invite is redeemed. A small throwaway wallet is created where that Safecoin is deposited. So you can take it back out, you can withdraw the invite if you need to, but as soon as the recipient claims it and opens their account, it's moved out of that throwaway wallet and into their new account, ready for them to get set up and running. Another consideration here is fluctuations in the price of Safecoin and how to avoid the circumstance where the time between be an invite being generated and it being redeemed, that there's not quite enough value left to pay for the account. This may well be unlikely, but we've thought through a mechanism to allow unredeemed invites to be automatically adjusted by crediting and debiting this wee wallet um, to match the going rate for an account. It means that the recipient won't miss out by the time they come to redeem and also you'll be credited, credited back and not end up overspending. So that can be turned on and off as an option here. Um, this particular feature might not make it all the way in the very first version of the app, but we have provided for in the design and kind of thought it through. From here, I can also rename the invite, um, which might be helpful if you want to keep track of things. And then from the main screen, I can see invites that are unclaimed um, and which I've withdrawn. Um, so I can withdraw an invite again quite easily um, and get that, get those, that funding back. Simple. And for the recipient, things should be relatively straightforward. With the Safe Network app installed, clicking that invite link that they've been sent will drop them right into the account creation process, ready to proceed with opening their account. But if not, they can navigate here by themselves and paste in that link, or they could even scan the QR code here really easily, and the invite is validated. And ta-da, I have all I need to create my login credentials and get up and running. I'll have an account and I'll have enough left over to create an identity, a safe ID, a site, and maybe I want to send a message of thanks to the generous friend too. So there we have it. Gifting an account to another person using the invite process. A simple solution that helps people onboard to the network without a centralized server and without the need to run a vault. This process could even be used at a community level or a similar mechanism could be used when purchasing an account in Fiat from an exchange or a third party. A simple flow to get you over that tricky inception hump. And once you have an account and a safe ID, receiving or making payments and topping up that account with Safecoin becomes super easy and accessible. We're building this software as we speak, as we put together the onboarding and account creation flows within the Safe Network app. But I hope you've enjoyed learning a bit more about the thinking behind it as we look forward to sharing more of what's coming soon. As always, we welcome your thoughts and feedback, either in the comments below or over on the forum at safenetforum.org.